What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi Shrinks and Sneakers.com. So in this video, what I'm going to ask is a question, and that is, can a novel anxiolytic drug actually improve people's symptoms of generalized anxiety disorder? So this came about because I read an interesting article regarding a medication or actually an over-the-counter supplement called Silexin. And often in psychiatry, I think we as psychiatrists get accused of not being interested in, you know, quote unquote, natural products or things that people could do naturally to help with their anxiety. My philosophy on it is if it's not interfering with your treatment, then it's a perfectly reasonable thing to add in, again, provided it's not going to interfere with whatever treatment we are working on. So let's talk specifically about this drug Silexin and a little bit about why I think it's an interesting complementary alternative medicine and why the mechanism of action differs from some of the other complementary alternative medicines commonly used in psychiatry. So the first thing I want to say about this medication is that it's used for generalized anxiety disorder and the most robust study actually looked at generalized anxiety disorder specifically. What we know about generalized anxiety disorder is pretty common and it's relatively difficult to treat. Most of the drugs that we have to treat generalized anxiety disorder are not very good. So to give an example here, the effect sizes, which is kind of an estimate of how effective the drug is, at least within that study, right? And effect sizes can be divided into small, medium, and large. So a small effect size would be something, say, less than 0.4. A, large, a medium effect size would be something between like 0.5 and 0.7 and anything above 0.7 would be a large effect size. So we're generally looking for large effect sizes because that's gonna to indicate to us that the medication or treatment that we're using is actually working. With that said, SSRIs, SNRIs, buspirone, commonly used medications for generalized anxiety disorder have an effect size of somewhere between 0.2 and 0.3. So again, not very effective, not very useful for treating someone's anxiety. On the flip side, we look at benzodiazepines, which might be one of the most effective drugs that we have for treating anxiety, and those drugs tend to have an effect size around 0.5, so still not very good, right? It's sort of more on that borderline of a small to medium effect size. What got me interested here is a study where we had an oral lavender extract called Silexin, and in the United States, this can be had over the counter. It's not a prescription drug and it had an effect size of 0.87. So very large effect size, seemingly very effective medication. And again, I said it was available over the counter under the brand name Nature's Way. You can search this up on Amazon or, or on Google and you'll find the medication. It's relatively inexpensive as well. With that said, this drug or medication has a lot of interesting pharmacological properties and the reasons why it may be effective in generalized anxiety disorder is because it inhibits calcium channels, which is similar to things like pregabalin or gabapentin. It has gabinergic effects, so similar to your benzodiazepines. It also has NMDA antagonist effects, similar to drugs like ketamine, and it also has serotonin 1A agonist effects, which is similar to other anxiolytic drugs. So the most relevant pharmacology from this group is probably the serotonin 1A agonist effects. That's most likely the main mechanism by which Silexin helps to reduce anxiety. So in large randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trials, we've seen that there's two doses that are effective. There's an 80 milligram dose and a 160 milligram dose. And in this particular trial that I'm talking about, they looked at paroxetine 20 milligrams and placebo. So they compared people on two doses of Silexin, either 80 or 160 milligrams, and then they compared that to people taking paroxetine 20, which is a standard SSRI medication, and placebo. So in this case, both doses of Silexin worked better than placebo, so it beat placebo, and it also beat paroxetine in each of those cases. So it was better than placebo, better than paroxetine. And that was measured using what's known as the Hamilton Anxiety Rating Scale. So the Hamilton Anxiety Rating Scale is a pretty good rating scale. It's going to identify a person who is having anxiety for sure if, if their symptoms are not getting better. So this is a pretty good study. Again, randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial, looking at two doses, as well as comparing it to a current accepted treatment for anxiety, paroxetine, 
as well as placebo. The effects appear to be dose dependent, so people who were taking the 80 milligrams had a smaller effect size than those taking the 160 milligrams. So the 160 milligrams seems to be better, but what's really interesting and what I really liked about this particular uh, discussion was that we saw we saw that the that 50 percent of people taking 160 milligrams had full remission so in psychiatry and mental health remission is very difficult to achieve in most cases response which we can define as a 50 percent reduction in symptoms is usually achievable remission where someone has no symptoms much much more difficult and often not achieved in many of these disorders they tend to be chronic and they tend to be like a relapsing and remitting type of course with most things like depression or anxiety. So another thing that's really important here is that this particular complementary alternative medicine doesn't have any addictive potential. It's not habit forming in any way. It doesn't have any withdrawal effects similar to the, like the way benzodiazepines would. Um, so there's less to worry about with it. The one notable side effect that I do want to mention is that some children or adolescents under the age of 18 who have issues with um, estrogen and breast development, they might want to avoid it as well as anyone who has an estrogen sensitive cancer. And the reason behind that is some of the, uh, some of the extracts in this lavender uh, have estrogen like properties, kind of like what we talked about with soy products in the past. And it can cause what's called gynecomastia in men and um, it can also cause problems for women. Right? So to look out for that, and that's only in people under the age of 18 and adolescents, not in the adult population. This was not seen in the adult population that took the drug. So where does this medication fit into someone's regimen? Well, there's a couple of cases. One, you have a patient who's tried a bunch of different medications. They've tried an SSRI, they've tried an SNRI. Their anxiety still remains the same or you have somebody who is against medication and has an anxiety disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, and is willing to try something natural. So you can say that this is a completely natural product. It is a lavender extract, as I said at the beginning. And so somebody who is more into complementary alternative medicine, this may be one that is actually very, very effective, right? Based on these randomized controlled trials that we discussed here. So it could fit in for those two scenarios, someone who's tried other medications and hasn't had much if much response, and somebody who has, you know, is not into uh, pharmaceutical medications and wants more of a natural product. It could also be good for patients who are using benzodiazepines chronically, say someone who is on benzodiazepines long term. You may be trying to taper them off of benzodiazepines. This medication may help to supplement some of that you know, anxiety that they're having. Obviously the withdrawal component of it, you're still gonna need to be mindful of because this will not help in, in, in that case. But it fits in nicely. I think it's a solid choice. I think it's actually a, a really good tool to have in your arsenal when treating generalized anxiety disorder, considering how difficult it is 